Robo Wars is about to start. It's a competition held over a weekend where competitors make their homemade remote controlled robots fight each other. For many competitors this is another competition, but for best mates and business partners, Miles and Jules, or Mules as they are known collectively, it's something else. Today is the day they are officially going to enter the world of Robo Wars. Um, I'm glad that the day's finally arrived because now we can stop working on it. Other contestants have used their robots in previous competitions, but Miles and Jules have just finished their robots early this morning. They only just found out about the rule that says robots must have a light to show when they are on or off. Light? We actually got a light in there. Oh, wow. How's that? Look at that. So, how did they get here? Well, Mills run a video production company that also does transfers from 8mm film to DVDs. But this business exists so they can fund their main project. Since 2003 they've been working on Wombok Forest, a stop motion film. It's a labour of love and over the past seven years they've created over an hour's worth of vision. And everything from the sets, puppets and even some equipment is handmade. Most of our puppets are made with a wire armature, or aluminium wire, and uh, Miles is just starting to use uh, ball joints. So he's starting to make ball joints. I don't like ball joint puppets. Don't attempt to do a feature film by yourself in stop motion. It's not worth it. No, just kidding. It's good. We were already planning another one, so it can't be that bad. It depends on the armature. Making things is clearly part of what they do. But how did they get involved with Robo Wars? We found this for 20 cents, shopping at the second hand shop for goodies. So we bought it home and had a good look through it and then we got to this part here where it says Team Omega and Hypnodisc. And we thought, hang on a minute, what is this stuff? So we looked it up on the internet and there it was, Robot Wars. So we started to get addicted to watching the robot wars and we thought, is there anything here in Brizzy? And they turned out there was. So. so that's how they got here and their debut has arrived. But before they get their robots out, Miles lends a hand judging the wars between the smaller robots. Tables are drawn and Lotus, controlled by Jules, is up against Bodgebot, famous for its flamethrower. <laughs> Jules seems to have some difficulties controlling Lotus. Bodgebot is stuck in a corner and requires human assistance. Soon they are at it again. Neither of the robots seem to be inflicting or sustaining much damage. Bodgebot eventually gets its flamethrower working. But despite the fireballs, the round ends without any obvious winner. As it turns out, Lotus earned two points and Bodgebot won. You didn't get wedged in a wall or anything. And electronics work? Yeah, what? So how did Lotus come about? For me, I wanted to make a spinner. And I wanted to use the circle and I wanted to use a bike wheel. So um, I just kept working with the bike wheel. Uh, um, and I want my uh, um, the damage to be done from two fins that I have out the side that I'm hoping I'll be able to spin up enough speed to take some chunks out of some of the hard cores. <laughs> and we have uh, already had injuries with it so it does cause some destruction of feet anyway. Are you worried the tire will be uh, punctured pretty rapidly? 
I guess it serves room. absolutely no purpose, so it's not going to hurt. Unless, of course, they dig into it and pull me like that way, but I'll spin out very quickly from their clutches. Next, Miles and his robot Wombot, named after their stop motion film, will fight Sidewinder. Its main weapon is a drill. Okay, here we go. Um, so, you ready? I think so. Let's hope it starts. But there is still some uncertainty whether Sidewinder is ready to compete. Oh. I've always been a fan that, you know, a, a supporter that if your robot doesn't work, then the other person should win. So they, I think I should have won that one. So Wombot takes the points by default. Although he scored three points, Miles didn't get a chance to show off the forklift-like robot's lifting ability. So what's going to happen, that's going to be bolted on the front there like that and then it's going to have some kind of little jutting arm bits there so that uh, when that'll slide underneath the other robot and then um, it'll lift up. So what kind of challenges have you had with this so far? Any parts that were more difficult than others? Um, well the weight's the problem. So you got 13 kilo limit. That's 11 without any other batteries and stuff, so that's looking promising. And how are you going to decorate this one? Um, well, it's, who know? I mean, it's going to just sort of build itself and then, um, because we've got to sort of seal it over, so I, get, I don't know. Jules has got drawings of the finished one, this one's just going to make itself. See, we've only started this two weeks ago, so we only knew it was on, you know, um, two weeks back, so this has been a rush job. Miles and Wombot are next put up against Scissor Hands, a sleek industrial unit with a reputation for swift destruction. <laughs> it's vital that Wombot stays away from the rotary. Wombot's only chance of victory is to get underneath Scissor Hands from the side or from behind. But Wombot takes a huge hit and is flipped over. Where'd they come from? Yeah. It was just that yeah. Yeah. Obviously something got yeah. done. Dislodged wires or something. But it could have been much worse. Here, Scissor Hands shows its destructive potential against these pieces of techno junk. Miles had been working on some other ideas for Wombot. Miles welded some tabs on the side of Wombot to stop it from falling over. So what are you battling with at the moment? Uh, just trying to get, get it so if it does fall over it can get itself back up. Miles and Jules made their robots mainly from bits and pieces from around the house. Jules created her fins from a barbecue hot plate. Miles and Jules both spent a great deal of time in their backyard fine-tuning their robots.
And Jules finds herself putting her baby Lotus up against another robot with an appetite for destruction. The aptly named Demon. Demon had already wooed crowds when it ripped its flywheel through the steel of another robot. The force was so great that the dislodged metal section was sent flying through the roof of the cage. The Robo Wars had to be stopped until the roof was repaired. It's me. <laughs> but he'll probably just burst the tyre, hey? He'll flip it and burst the tyre, I reckon. If I can drive it straight, I'll be happy. Remarkably, Lotus fares quite well against Demon. Lotus's low profile guards it from Demon's big hits. The panels that make up the floor have gradually shifted and are no longer flush, and Demon has challenges navigating around the course. After being flipped by Demon, Lotus is unable to continue. Lotus came out against one of the veteran robots without too much body damage. And Demon celebrates the win by doing a trademark donut. You're being kind! You're being very kind! <laughs> Wombot is up for its last battle of the day against Bodgebot and its flamethrower. Miles is still in a good mood, evident by his readiness for bad puns. How are you feeling, mate? Oh yeah, fine, fine. Fine, Over here? Ready, set, go! Oh, it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. The key to Wombot's success is to lift up the opponent. To do that, it needs to get close. In this case, close to the fire. Unfortunately, one wheel stops working and Wombot can only move in circles as Bodgebot blasts it with flames. Yeah, Wombot was doing what he wanted to do, I don't know. I just cut his power to stop him. After their first day of Robo Wars, both the robots have come off with bruises and scratches. Mules have a video job in the evening and have to leave rather unceremoniously. They have finished their first day in the ring and whether they continue in this community or not is anyone's guess.